Well, what um, I wanted to bring today is pretty well what Theresa was just sharing with us. Fatima. <laughs> That's John's fault. That is John's fault. Fatima, sorry. Uh, better illustrated by, by that. So if you have to think about anything, think about that. Um, but before we start, I'm, I'm getting back into the whole uh, teaching thing. It's been a while, six weeks. Um, and normally you do a little uh, quick starter to get the brain going. Um, now, uh, Avril shared with us last week, um, if you remember, uh, living God's way, uh, not my way. That was pretty well the, the, the title of it. Uh, hands up if you were here. Yeah, pretty well a lot of you. If you weren't here, uh, then you can either guess what she said in this test or find out what she said from someone who was here. Okay. Um, so this is your test uh, uh, to get your mental starter, 30 seconds. Can you remember um, her eight points uh, from last <laughs> Sunday? Uh, I'll, I'll let you off if you can remember three of them. Anything less than three is very bad. Uh, Avril, eight, please. Um, so uh, you've got to tell the person next to you what the eight points were. If you weren't here, then find someone who was here or guess what they were, which is even more fun. 30 seconds. You've got to do it. Come on. Now you've had about 20 seconds. You've got 10 more seconds to go. You know them. <laughs> well, I did as well. Yes, I know. You're allowed to cheat. You can look at your notes. You are allowed to. Um, five, four, three, two, one. Time. That's it. Um, so here we go then. Uh, this is the list. I wonder how many you managed to get. Uh, I'm, I hope I got them all. Um, these, were, these were based on my notes, so I might have got them wrong. So number one, um, so living God's way, not mine. Number one, don't have, uh, you don't have to try too hard. Phew, that's good. Um, number two, um, ask for forgiveness. Even when it feels like you're letting someone get away with it. Number three, go with his nudges. Number four, be willing to be totally interested in those with you, which I know Avril struggled a lot with, if you remember that bit. Uh, <laughs> number five, do things you'd prefer not to do just because someone else wants to do them. Um, number six, spend time with God intentionally. Uh, number seven, choose to give thanks. Recognize what God is doing in your life. And number eight, even when we get it wrong, we can get it right. Now, Where's Mark Bates? Come help me out, my friend. My, my tablet goes, um, goes uh, dead, and I don't know how to turn it, turn it back on again. <laughs> this is going to be a problem for my talk, because my notes are on it, and I hope this is my first time using this. How do you do it? Look, it's on to sleep. Oh, that's it, done, thank you. Can, <laughs> can you sit there? Sit there. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Right, so what I have to do, every so often I have to waggle my uh, tablet, and then I'll get working. Good. Right, I'm wasting time. 19 minutes ago. So... The reason why I wanted to bring this up was because basically what I felt God talking to me about was what Avril uh, shared with us about. Um, and um, the key thing is that actually um, God is wanting to train us in our, uh, our life of faith. Uh, in the Bible, basically, living God's way, not my way, is the life of faith. That's what it is in the Bible. Um, and so, um, what I wanted to share with you was some things that God's been talking to me about, about that. And, and, and they're pretty well, uh, in a nutshell, have already been shared with us. But I think it's worth dwelling on that and, and um, picking out bits and seeing how we're going with it. So, um, over the summer holidays, oh yeah, by the way, God doesn't need you, he wants you. There's a little phrase that popped into my head as I was writing this. And it's something I think maybe God wants to share, uh, highlight. He doesn't, really, he doesn't need our help in anything, but he wants us. So, here we go. Um, Annabelle and I, over the summer holidays, six weeks, had time to kill. Um, God has um, been speaking to me um, in a certain way. Now, you notice that Jesus, often God, God kind of drops stuff into his mind about the natural world and that kind of stuff. Um, Jamie Singleton, you'll notice, when he does talks, he often uses um, film clips. Don't he? Um, God spoke to me uh, over the holiday using a reality TV show. Um, and it, it just shows a little bit about, my, about myself. Now, the reality TV show 
um, is called Commando Training School. Now, it's a, it, it is a great program because you're sat there on the couch watching these guys uh, working their socks off. It's, it's quite, you know, uncomfortable viewing. But basically, the, the show is all about how uh, about the training these commandos go through in order to uh, basically completely transform from their civilian mindset to this commando mindset. Uh, and the, the titles of the show come up, and you, you can imagine it. You've got these com uh, well-trained commando soldiers in their kind of uh, camouflage gear on these kind of boats, uh, ready for action, looking pretty impressive. Uh, there's me sat in, in my big, uh, fluffy uh, dressing gown, thinking, yeah, that's not me. Uh, I, you know, that's, it's, you know it, there's this quite, quite impressive guys. You know, they're pretty strong uh, and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then what I love about it is it then pans to the room of some of the recruits who are training. Um, and there they are with their boxer shorts uh, on, uh, with their slightly pop bellies, uh, uh, kind of doing the ironing. Uh, you, they, it, then, it then pans to these guys, these recruits who are standing to attention, ready for their office to, officer to come and look at their uh, room. And one of them does a big fart really loudly, and then they all start giggling. <laughs> These guys are training to be commandos. They, they move in this training from having civilian mindset uh, to being able to go out into extraordinary uh, situations and uh, do these incredible things. And God spoke to me about that, and he talked to me about how that's a bit like us, and we're in this kind of faith training school. Okay, so I'd like you to get your head on that. So we're on it in the faith training school. Now, one uh, thing they have to do uh, on this uh, commando training is uh, one of the, the tests they have to pass. They have to climb up these 30-foot gym ropes all the way up and uh, touch the top with a big weight on their uh, back. And um, it's, it, it looks as though it should be fairly easy. Um, but you've got these pretty strong guys, and um, you can see them. They go up pretty fast to start with. By the time they get to near the top, their arms are kind of shaking. Um, and you, you're looking at it, you think, God, you've got one meter to go. Come on, you can do this. You've got one meter. Just, just do it. The amount of them that stop there, they've got to just touch this tape to pass the test. It's the tape at the top of the rope. And you can see them, and you're willing them to go to do it. You've got the guys who are training them kind of shouting encouragement, sometimes encouragingly, sometimes maybe using some interesting language. <laughs> the amount of times during the training they get to a meter or less from the tape and then slide back down again. And it's like, oh, sweet. Hmm. Um, but the, the bit that got me was that um, when it came to the actual test, so this is the training part, when it came to the test, you follow these guys, and, you, and some of them, they fail every single time. But it gets to the test bit, and uh, there's this test field that they do this work out on. And the, the uh, trainers are all uh, on this hill watching their trainees trying to get past this test, and they're rooting. They're rooting for these guys to do it. The, um, the chief commander bloke, he came down to watch uh, one of these, some of these recruits, um, and he said, just whispered to the person next to him, you know what, I really root for the underdog in this. There was this, there was this one chap who uh, worked at a Weatherspoon's pub. Pretty significant change to his life, you know, going to be a commando. Um, the, the, the general was watching this guy. He had never passed this test ever. In, this, in the final training test, with the crowd of... of uh, um, commando uh, leaders watching, he managed to pass it. And, and the, uh, the excitement in those leaders was amazing. They were so, so proud of this guy. Um, the civilian mindset did not work in that situation. There was a, uh, one particular recruit who, um, they were on this um, march across Dartmoor, the terrible weather, uh, you know, with, with all their rucksacks on and stuff, it, was, it looked a bit of a nightmare. Um, they were all in tents, and one of the parts of the thing is to get them mentally tough, so they wake them up in the middle of the night and say, right, you have to walk another 10 miles and pack all your equipment away. And so about 10 minutes later, uh, everyone's packed up, ready to go, 
it pans across. There's one tent still there. Uh, and <laughs> that one of the leaders goes out and kind of looks in, and there's a guy, a chap there, who basically says, I don't want to get up there. It's too cold. <laughs> mm. He might have picked the wrong lifestyle choice, maybe, <laughs> possibly. Okay, so, so what's this got to do with us? Well, after watching that um, program, I woke up one morning and I read this bit. Okay, it's Hebrews chapter 12. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily tri trips us up, and let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. We do this by keeping our eyes on Jesus, the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. Because of the joy awaiting him, he endured the cross, disregarding its shame. Now he is seated in the place of honor beside God's throne. And then further on, on that chapter, verse 12, it says, Take a new grip with your tired hands and stand firm on your shaky legs. Mark out a straight path for your feet. You can see where my mind went on that one. Take, take a new grip with tired hands. Okay, we're called to a life of faith that is... Um, challenging. It's tough. Um, we're in this kind of training school, and, and, and you can see how um, around us, um, God calls us to um, engage with a battle. It's not a physical battle, but it's, it's, it's war out there. The war we're talking about uh, is for people's lives, um, and it's, it's just as real as the, the wars that the commandos will go and fight. Our prayer is, may your kingdom come and may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So there is a, there is a war at foot around us about which will, what's, what's happening around us on earth. And what I believe God is calling us to, and what I believe God is saying to, to us, is wake up. Wake up, O oh sleeper, wake up, and Christ will shine in you, and he is calling us to this life of faith, and is waking us up to the reality of it. So, this faith training school, we need to know what faith is. So I'm going to read this to you. Uh, this is Hebrews 11, uh, verses 1 to 2. From the Amplified Version, because it's got just so much stuff in it. It kind of says, says everything about it. So it says, now, faith is the assurance, the confirmation, the title deed of the things we hope for, being the proof of the things we do not see, and the conviction of their reality. Faith perceiving as real fact what is not revealed to the senses. For by faith, trust and holy further, born of faith, the men of old had divine testimony born to them and obtained a good report. And we heard divine testimony um, today. Divine testimony being something that God is doing. It's beyond our senses. It's beyond what we, we can see naturally. It is something that's gone on in the, in the, in the kingdom. And... Um, so, basically, faith is seeing what's going on in heaven. The unseen spiritual realm and acting in the physical realm, earth, based on that. Not what is presenting itself as fact in our physical earthly realm, to our senses. We base our decisions and actions on what God says. Our faith is the proof of, or in another version, evidence of what we can't see. It brings into this world we live in that God loves so much what is happening in heaven. It is God's will being done on earth as it is in heaven. In heaven. When I speak over someone, 
not what I see with my senses, but what I feel God is saying about them, that releases into the physical world that which is in heaven. There is a heaven reality. We can't see it, but it is more real than what we see around us. It is there. In our faith training, God is trying to help us see that reality is more real than the physical stuff we can see with our senses. Um, Bill Johnson says, so he's a, a leader of a church in Reading, Bethel Church, he says, faith is not believing God can do it. The devil believes that. It is believing God is about to do it. It is hearing and seeing what he is doing and declaring that into the reality of our physical world around us. So to non-believers, for instance, poor deluded souls sat in an average school hall on a Sunday morning when you could be outside enjoying the sunshine, cleaning your car. For us, who are full of peace. It is, um, we are in the presence of God. Uh, the reality is that God has stuff for us to, to share with us, to, to uplift us. There are angels in this room who are ministering to some of you. That is the, the reality that God has called us to live in. When you pray for someone, when you pray, you are acting in faith, aren't you? You're bringing in uh, what the, what's going on in heaven to earth. My faith is like a doorway between the unseen and the seen. It is the doorway for the impact of the kingdom of heaven to come in the physical uh, stuff around us. Faith pleases God, and he tests it. Hebrews 11.6 says, And without faith it is impossible to please God. 1 Peter 1, to 1 uh, verse 7, these trials will show that your faith is genuine. It's being tested as fire tests and purifies gold. Though your faith is far more precious than mere gold. Hebrews eleven seventeen. it was by faith that Abraham offered Isaac as a sacrifice when God was testing him. Um, God cares and wants us, like he loves us so much that he, he wants to see us growing in our faith. So at points in our lives, it's like God gives us this gym rope of faith. We're climbing up. What are you going to make that decision based on? Am I making a decision based on what I think and feel? Am I going to make a decision based on what God's saying? There's my gym rope of faith. Am I going to stop halfway up and slide back down, or am I going to go for it? Right, I'm running out of time. So... Um, I quickly wanted to do you, uh, give you a faith anatomy lesson. As I'll get back into the teaching realm here. So, um, our mind, it needs renewing. We know that. It says it in Romans. Yeah, renew, renew your mind so that you might um, perceive what God's doing, basically. It, it, you need to have it renewed in order to be able to see what's going on in the heavenly realms. You need to have it renewed. You can't, it, the battle goes on here. You know it because as soon as you make a decision, based on what you think God's saying, there are voices that kick in immediately, guarantee it, that will be questioning it. You will suddenly not really, the battle that kicks off is incredible. It is the kind of, it, it, it's, a, it's a filtering thing, and that's why we need to renew our mind. Our flesh, now we know in the Bible about our flesh, uh, you can't trust it for a second. It is like a naughty child. Uh, if you've ever fasted before, you know what it's like. Because as soon as, you, as, soon as your body doesn't get it what, it what it wants, it makes a great big fuss about it. You know, your belly starts rumbling. You can't think of anything else apart from food, all that kind of stuff. Um, it, it, it's, 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 so that's our flesh. And then our spirit, our inner man, in the Bible, uh, it often uses the word heart or, uh, and spirit. Um, our inner man is the bit that has been reborn. As, we've decided, as we follow, decided to follow Jesus, that get, bit gets reborn. Um, it sometimes talks about our conscience. 
Um, our Holy Spirit witnesses to our spirit. Um, it says that for those who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God in Romans. It, it also says the Spirit himself testifies with our spirit that we are God's children. Uh, they're, they're, so we can be convinced and certain that God will speak to us in our, in our spirit. The, the, there's this rising up that comes uh, when we hear God, which happened to Fatima, which was to do with the forgiveness thing. That was not her. That was God talking to her. Her decision was the action bit. And she did it. She acted on it. Okay, I'm kind of running out of time. I've got about three minutes, but I will quickly pace, pace through this. Because what I'd like you to do is when you go back and read your Bible at home, look at the New Testament Gospels, look at the disciples. Basically, they are in a faith training school. They, they are, that is their, what, what goes on. And this is a particular one. Uh, I'll read it to you. At the foot of the mountain, a large crowd was waiting for them. A man came and knelt before Jesus and said, Lord, have mercy on my son. He has seizures and suffers terribly. He often falls into the fire or into the water. So I brought him to your disciples, but they couldn't heal him. Jesus said, you faithless and corrupt people, how long must I be with you? How long must I put up with you? Bring the boy here to me. Pretty harsh words. He's probably talking to the disciples, I think. And um, it's a bit like the regiment standing there uh, feeling very daft. The, the, you know, the commander leader has, has basically pulled them up on this. They're feeling pretty daft. Well, some of them probably say, that's really mean for him to say that to me. <laughs> um, you know, they probably that sort of stuff. They might have been um, saying, oh, no, it, was, it wasn't me. No, Peter prayed that one. It was his fault, that kind of thing. You, know, you can imagine the stuff going on there. Then Jesus rebuked the demon in the boy, and it left him. And from that moment, the boy was well. This is the great bit. This is the training school bit. Afterwards, the disciples asked Jesus pri privately, why couldn't we cast out that demon? And this is it. You don't have enough faith, Jesus told them. I tell you the truth. If you had faith even as small as a mustard seed, you could say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it would move. Nothing would be impossible. Okay, so why a mountain? Uh, can you think of anything physically bigger than a mountain? I can't, I can't think of that. I have been trying to think of something, I can't. In, in, on earth, I mean, maybe the sun, that kind of stuff. But on earth, in terms of uh, representation, you can't think of anything bigger than a mountain. Okay, in the natural physical world, there is not a chance of moving that mountain. Couldn't do it. If I try hard, not going to move. Even if I pray, pray the right prayer, will it move? If I believe God could move the mountain, will it move? If God says it will move, he's saying it will move, it will move. Why am I seeing God in this? What, 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 what am I seeing here? Questions for you to think about. What mountains are there in your life right now? Um, the mountain in the, the chap's life in the story was the fact that his kid, who's a, a young boy, a, a boy, so he's under 12, he's having seizures, he's being thrown into fire and water. If you think about it long enough, you realize that's pretty significant. Um, there, it is just as likely, if I think hard, if I say the right thing, for me to help this in this situation, as for me to move a mountain. There is no difference in the natural, physical way. It, it, it's the same thing. It's impossible. Utterly impossible. Think of mountains in your life. Think of mountains of people in the lives around you. It is the same thing. Impossible. It is impossible. Why mustard seed? So it's tiny, isn't it? I mean, you can't, in physical representation, you can't think of a smaller thing than the mustard seed in that situation. Okay? So what he's saying is, faith, if I, if I see what God is doing, and I do the smallest thing in line with that, then the mountain can move. It is not based on um, a big thing, it's based on hearing the nudge. If, 
It's literally, it takes any pressure off of me, apart from the fact that I am walking with the ability to hear God, see something which is not in the senses, but which is in the reality of the heavens, and speak it into being. In this situation, Jesus saw what was going on, in not physical, but spiritual, and told the demon to go away. And he left. So, that's it. Our faith is like the doorway between what's going on in the unseen and what's going on in the seen. And the battle that goes on is intense, don't get me wrong. The, the voices you listen to are so important. Do you listen to the many voices or do you listen to the one voice? And what I believe God wants us to do is train, train ourselves, train each other, help each other to hear the one voice that counts, which is what is, what is God saying? And then if, if you do it, then leap onto that. Go the, the challenge is, can you do it to get to that top of that rope? 